τον άντρα τον πολύτροπο πες μου θεά που χρόνια παράδερνε σαν πάτησε της τρία στα Αγιοκάστρο. Τ' ανθρώπων γνώρισε πολλών τους τόπους και τη γνώμη και έπαθε πλήθος οι φορές τα πέλαγα ζητώντας πως την πατρίδα του άβλαβος να πάει με τους συντρόφου. Μα κι έτσι αυτούς δεν γλίτωσε μόσο καημό κι αν είχε γιατί μονάχοι χάθηκαν από δικό τους κρίμα οι άσεβοι που φάγανε του ουρανοδρόμου ήλιου τα βόδια και του στέρισε του γυρισμού τη μέρα Πες τα από κάπου και σε μας θεά του διακόρη. This is the formings. This is the instrument of Phineus, of uh, Demodocus, maybe the instrument of Homer, if Homer existed. <laughs> It is always a question if the ancient Greeks used to play chords. But we can see from the depictions, they muted some strings and the plectrum strummed. These instruments were developed through the use of 3D scanning technology based on depictions from ancient pots and vases. In ancient times, musicians were restricted to gut strings only. But today, this instrument is strung with nylon. Recreating these sounds somehow evokes images of those ancient times, making them feel even more real. Talk to me about uh, the performance of poetry in, in, in ancient Greek culture, my understanding is that it was all performed with music. There wasn't this separate category that we have today, that, that came much later. In ancient times, when we say the word music, it means three things all together. It is music as we can understand music today, dance and poetry. And poetry was the first thing, in the beginning was the world. This is very Greek, as you can understand. Today, there's almost a certain snobbery. For example, when, when Bob Dylan won the Nobel Prize for Literature, A, there was a question that music lyrics are not literature. But in general, I've been part of many debates, and it's a big debate now in modern academia, where people feel that music performed to poetry is lesser poetry. And what's ironic is this is coming often from the same people who would elevate the Homeric epics as the greatest example of poetry ever, but they were set to music in their own time. You're right that this differentiation exists uh, today. But uh, in ancient Greece, they had contests for music. A poet musician had to stake his fame because they were the most famous. Interesting. So they were almost like early, I don't want to say pop stars, but they were, you know, very, very popular. Exactly, pop stars. Yeah, yeah. They were pop stars. Mm. Anyway, just messing around, um, trying to come up with some, some little flavors and vibes. I'm obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a novice when it comes to this stuff, but it's really beautiful just to, you know, sit and play. And it was really interesting to hear, A, the continuity between ancient performances of poetry and music, but also art and music have had this tremendous power to evoke emotion and reaction and behavior in its audience. And it just, again, as an artist, to me, it, it speaks to this tremendous power that art has within human society and music in particular. Um, but it was really interesting also to hear about how much details we still know about how these very, very ancient instruments were played and how similar it really is to, to modern forms of music. So again, a, a real interesting lesson in this particular instrument being the instrument of Homer, if Homer existed. If we can resurrect the sounds of Homer, maybe we can resurrect his original locations too.